Hey YouTube, it's ACU, and today I'm going to show you guys my top 10 free Cydia tweaks. Now previously I did create another top 10 tweaks video, however in said video I had a combination of different paid and free packages. Well now today it's going to be different because I'm going to share with you guys again a list of 10 free awesome tweaks inside of Cydia to get you started once jailbroken. Speaking of which, if you have yet to jailbreak, just be sure to check out my in-depth untethered iOS 7.0.5 for jailbreak tutorial. Once you're jailbroken, you can come back to this video and install all of the awesome tweaks. Also, before we begin, I want to preface by saying that if you see any tweaks that I don't mention in today's video, just be sure to check out my previous top 10 tweaks video because I guarantee you it will be listed there. Also, if you jailbroke using a previous version of Evasion, meaning any version other than 1.0.4, you will need to install some updates inside of Cydia. So I will have a link to my recent in-depth video on the topic on the screen now via an annotation if you're on the desktop version of YouTube. I'll also have a link to a video detailing my favorite free winner board theme as well. All right, and with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. All of the tweaks that I will detail in today's video will be available on default repos inside of Cydia, meaning you won't have to add anything with the exception of one. And that's only because right now the version for iOS 7 is in beta stages, so you will be required to add that repo. It's very simple to do. If you're on the iPad version of Cydia, just go to sources down below at the bottom, tap edit, followed by add, and then from there, all you'll have to do is just add it and don't worry, I'll give that to you later. If you're on an iPhone, simply go to manage at the bottom and then sources followed by edit and add. So it's pretty much the same on all devices. All right, and with that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and continue with the first tweak in today's video, which is CC Loader. Now I'm going to show you guys the settings pane for it. So once you install it, simply navigate to again the settings application followed by CC Loader. From there, you have quite a few options to change Control Center exactly the way you like it. At the top, you have your enabled sections that you can rearrange. So for instance, if I want media controls on the top, all I have to do is just drag it to the top. As you can see, it instantly adjusts. So now let's go ahead and put brightness to the top instead. And again, we have the brightness slider exactly at the top where we put it. So CC Loader is absolutely great. It also gives you the option to hide separators. Let me turn it off really quick so you can see what it's like by default. As you can see, of course, you have the standard iOS 7 lines in between the different elements of Control Center. Now, with hide separators enabled, once you bring up Control Center, you don't have those lines. It's very nice, it's very sleek, and there are other standalone tweaks that provide the same exact solution. However, I prefer CC loaders because, again, it gives you a ton of other options, including the option to enable dynamic media control, which I'll go over in just a second when I discuss the third tweak in today's list. Next, CCP info for Control Center relies upon CC Loader. Essentially, it just gives you some statistics such as your Wi-Fi and data IP addresses. It tells you how much storage is left on your device, and it also tells you how much free or available memory or RAM you have, which is actually what I use it for most. In order to reposition it, again, you can go to the settings for CC Loader, and you can move it. It's just CCP info again. So I can move it to the top and as you can see it changes accordingly and now it's at the top. I'm going to go ahead and move it back down to the bottom though and we're going to discuss the third tweak in today's video being slide to kill 7. So what slide to kill 7 does is it closes out of all applications and I'm going to do that now. By entering the multitasking mode you simply have to swipe down on one application and it closes all apps. So I'm going to do it really quick and it will enable slide to kill seven. As you can see, all apps closed and it also frees up RAM. So for those of you who were paying attention previously, you will notice that I have more available memory now. Also, you will notice that I don't have the playing section inside of Control Center. That's what I was talking about before for CC Loader. Dynamic Media Controls essentially removes the media control portion from Control Center when you don't have an application open that's playing media. So let me show you what I mean. If I were to disable it, when I bring up Control Center, now I have the 
play controls. However, if I were to re-enable it because I don't have anything open in the background because I use slide to kill seven to close out of everything, I no longer have that portion inside of Control Center, which in my opinion is really great and it definitely slims it down. Back to the third tweak though, which again is slide to kill seven. You have a few options for it aside from just enabling it. You can enable the option to kill now playing, which again, if you were to play media, it would kill now playing if you have it enabled. Also, you can edit your excluded apps list, which essentially means that it won't close out of applications in that list if they're enabled. For the fourth tweak, as you can see in the right-hand corner of my dock, we have Byte SMS, which is the tweak that I was talking about previously that's currently in its beta stages. So if you want to get the latest version of Byte SMS, you will need to add that repo like I had discussed. It's on the display now and down below in the more info in case you miss it. Now, although Byte SMS is a premium tweak, it does have a trial period. And once that trial period expires, you just have a few simple ads telling you to purchase the extended edition of Byte SMS. It's nothing too annoying and you can definitely use Byte SMS even when it's expired. Mine is expired and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. But first, let me give you a quick demonstration of Byte SMS. It has a ton of different settings that you can configure from within inside the application itself. But for now, I'm just going to show you Quick Compose. I've set up a custom action using Activator to when I slide on the status bar up in the top, it will bring up Quick Compose. So as you can see there, I now have Quick Compose. I'm going to send a quick test message to myself. And yes, I did say test, not text, because we are sending an iMessage. So I'm going to send it. And as you can see, it will come through up at the top here in just a second. And if I were to tap that banner notification, it brings up quick reply, which is extremely convenient. From there, you can open it, you can type another message and send it. You can also get a ton of different options as well. We have pop up, delete, we can call the number if it is a number, not an email address via iMessage and you can configure that completely from within inside the quick reply portion of the Byte SMS settings app. So I'm going to go ahead and just send this really quick to give a demonstration of what happens when we reply. As you can see, it gives you the same pop-up so you can reply to them at a later time from within inside notification center. Now I'm going to open up Byte SMS really quick just to show you guys that it looks exactly like the traditional messages app. However, of course we have quick reply and quick compose so it is superior. Now, this is the traditional Byte SMS app. It's nearly identical except for this pop-up menu that occurs when you hit the plus button if you wanted to send a picture or something, for instance. Now, let me show you the ads really quick. If I were to go back to the main section where I have the overview of all my messages, it gives you an ad at the bottom, and it also gives you an ad when you go inside of a picture. As you can see, it just says Byte SMS, click, to remove ads and then it just will ask you to purchase a license inside of PayPal for $7.99 but it's fully usable Quick Reply and Quick Compose work perfectly without having to purchase the extended edition of Byte SMS. And I can actually demo the next tweak swipe selection from within inside Byte SMS or really any app that utilizes the keyboard and an input section for characters. So essentially swipe selection is a free tweak that allows you to easily select all of your text just by using the keyboard. You can also more accurately navigate through the text just by swiping on the keyboard. It's more more convenient than if you were to tap and try to search for the specific spot inside of your typed text that you want to edit. Again, you can also select it and it's very simple to use, it's very fast. And in order to change it from the standard nav view to the select view, simply hold down the shift button and swipe. Next, we have Winterboard. As you may have noticed, my iPhone 5S doesn't exactly look like a stock device because the icons are slightly different. And that is, of course, because I have a custom theme installed via Winterboard. Winterboard is a powerful theming platform that allows developers and artists to create full themes that replace all elements of iOS. They can also specifically target elements such as the icons in this instance and create themes for devices. So I'm going to go inside of Winterboard. It's extremely simple. It has a very awesome interface. And what you do is you actually go through and select the themes you want to enable or disable. Once you check or uncheck those themes, you can go to the home screen and it will respring your device and either apply 
or remove the themes you previously had selected. Now, once it comes back up, I'm going to show you guys that my iPhone is back to stock, okay? And as you can see, now all of my icons are back to normal iOS 7 stock artwork. Winterboard is very great, and again, you can get it from within Side City, and it's actually developed by the creator of Cydia himself, Sarek. Next up is Side Elite, which is a convenient extension that allows you to delete various Cydia apps that you install without actually having to go inside of Cydia to delete them. So while it doesn't allow you to delete certain tweaks that don't have an icon, the ones that provide you with an icon on your springboard, you can delete. So Terminal was installed via Cydia. What I can do is go ahead and tap on it. And as you can see, when it enters the wiggle or edit mode, I can simply tap the X up in the top left hand corner Corner, and it will ask me if I want to delete terminal. It gives me a kind of different prompt. It actually says deleting terminal will uninstall and then it says mobile terminal dash Apple SDK. So that's a different message than if I were to delete an app store app. However, once I deleted it, it will delete all associated packages and extensions for that application inside of Cydia. So I don't actually have to, again, go inside of Cydia. It's much more convenient and time efficient to delete them this way. Again, it's called Side Delete. Next is Disable Parallax Effect. This is an extremely simple tweak, and as you may have already noticed, when I move my iPhone around, it doesn't actually move the background. The icons move ever so slightly still, but it completely disables the parallax effect, and this is really great because it does slightly extend your battery life because it's not having to detect as much motion data. So when I go inside of Cydia, as you can see, the package listing is just disable parallax effect. And once you install it, you don't have any settings to configure. It simply works. And if you want to re-enable parallax effect, all you have to do is tap modify and remove and go through the remove process. And then once you respring, you will have parallax effect back. This is very similar to iOS 7.1, which includes this feature by default. You can disable parallax effect. However, of course, 7.1 is is expected to patch the Evasion 7 untethered jailbreak. So if you want the option to disable Parallax now, just install Disable Parallax Effect from within inside Cydia. All right, with this ninth tweak, we're closing in on one of my favorites. The ninth one, however, is clear folders, and essentially it removes the folder background and it just displays your background. So as you can see, I don't have the customary white background for the folders that was introduced within iOS 7 but when I exit out of it, it does give that slight animation. So you can see there, it almost tries to load it, but it looks very clean once the folder is actually open because again, it disables that customary iOS 7 folder background. All right, and finally, for one of my favorite free tweaks and for the 10th tweak in this video, we have Multi-Icon Mover. This is a tweak that's been around forever. You can find it from inside Cydia by searching Multi-Icon Mover, and essentially it allows you to move multiple icons at a time. So when we're in the edit mode, simply by tapping on an icon and holding, we can move multiple icons, again, at a time, as the name would suggest, simply by tapping them. When you tap icons, you get little red check marks in the bottom right-hand corner of the icons. And then in order to move all of the icons you have checked, you just need to go to the desired page and then click the home button and all of the icons that you had checked will move to that page. So I'm going to do it one more time just to show you guys exactly how easy it is to move multiple icons at a time with multi-icon mover. As you can see, all of the icons are now on the first page. All right, and that concludes my top 10 list of free Cydia tweaks, apps, packages, extensions, whatever you want to call them. And if you like this video and you want a chance to enter to win a $100 Amazon gift card, just be sure to rate it up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Once your comment's been posted, you'll be automatically entered to win. And like I said before, if you saw a tweak demonstrated in this video that wasn't explicitly highlighted and detailed, just be sure to check the annotations because I guarantee you, you'll be able to find it there. Also, if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos and push out top tweaks videos, just be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.